In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I took a solid brass doorknob from my very first home and turned it into a really cool keychain that I can always keep. Let me show you how I did it. Now, I knew as soon as I took off that doorknob that I wanted to turn it into a little mini axe keychain, with the head of the axe being made from the brass. So the first thing I did was make a pattern for the axe head, and I made mine from wood. And because of the sand casting process, I was able to cut in the left and right profile, but I left the top and bottom of it square. Next, I moved on to making my own green sand, which is the sand used for sand casting. I'll link to the instructional video I used to make the green sand from sand and kitty litter. But while this did work, it didn't come out with the surface finish that I was hoping for. So I only used this mixture for my very first casting, but ended up purchasing some higher quality green sand from a local foundry shop. If you plan to get into casting, I definitely recommend just purchasing the higher quality sand right off the bat. But there is a link in the description of the video if you're interested in making your own. The next component I moved to was making the flask, which is the name given to the box for the actual sand casting. The flask is made up of two components, the cope and the drag, which is just the top and the bottom. And I'll also link to the video I used in order to make my flask. Pretty much the most important thing while making the flask is that both the cope and the drag need to be perfectly flat and level so that they made up properly. And you also need to have some sort of locating system for the top and bottoms so that they made up perfectly each and every time. Okay, with everything made, now it was just the process of sand casting the actual pattern. There are a ton of videos that I watched prior to casting my part, and I'll link to a few of them that I thought were really helpful. But just as an overview, I put my ax head at the bottom and then compacted sand all around it. And the finer you can get the sand around your pattern, the better surface quality your part is gonna come out after the casting. That's where the higher quality sand comes into play. It's a lot less cleanup. After getting the drag compacted with the part in place, I scraped it off flush and then flipped it upside down. I didn't have any proper parting powder, so I just used some baby powder. Next, I put the cope on the top of the flask and also compacted it with sand. Now this is where I added in the sprue, which is the hole where I'll be pouring the melted metal into the mold. And then also a vent hole, which gives the hot air and gases an escape route. And pulling these guys out was one of the trickiest parts. I ended up disrupting some of the sand because there was a slight taper to my pipe that I didn't realize. So I went back with my finger and compacted it as best I could. It looks messy, but it ended up working out just fine. Next, I parted the cope and drag, swept away all of the excess sand that ended up falling out from my mishap, and cut in two pathways or gateways to the part. Next, I removed the pattern, and then finally, I started up the foundry kind of a long process to get to this point. It's kind of exciting. To make them easier to melt, I took the handles and cut them into smaller pieces, then dropped it into the crucible inside the foundry. Once I saw the brass was melting, I would pour in some boric acid, which I read will help keep the zinc in the brass from boiling away. After about 20 minutes, the brass was completely melted, so I removed the lid and poured it into my casting. Get a shot of that, how cool that looks. how cool that looks. Now everything is extremely hot, which is why I'm working over an area that's mostly sand. But still, setting down the lid, setting down the crucible, it, it all starts a fire immediately. So be sure to keep that in mind if you're gonna be doing this project. Now, of course, I was taking my time, but at the same time, trying to move quickly. I would pour the molten brass into the casting until I could see it come up through that vent hole. This let me know that the entire cast was full. <laughs> My pouring skills could use some improvement. On this particular one, the first one came out okay, but the second one was just perfect, I thought. Ooh. This one came out a lot better. Now the metal does cool quickly, but it's still very hot, so I made sure to only pick it up with either tongs or my gloves. But there you can see the axe head. This one came out really nice. Even cut the taper. Once it was cooled down enough to touch, I started cleaning it up. I used a rotary tool in order to first break away all of the excess brass. And then I took it over to my belt sander and started not only cleaning up the surface to a nice smooth finish, and then also shaping it to the exact shape that I wanted. And the part does get very hot while shaping it. So I kept a bucket of water on standby whenever the heat would build up. 
and the nose of the belt sander worked perfectly for the shape of the axe. Oh, drum solo. And another. Okay, the head is done. I moved on to making a handle. Just traced out a little handle I thought was to scale and cut it out with the bandsaw originally. Then uh, once again, used my belt sander to just shape it to my liking. I shaped the body how I liked it, and then I moved on to making the eye. Using the back of the sander where the paper is suspended in order to make a nice clean shoulder. Then to attach it, I used some two-part epoxy. Hmm. <laughs> It was an extremely long process getting to this point, but it was definitely worth it. If there's something you want to make, regardless of what it is, just set your mind to it and chop chop. This was quite a different project for me. There was a ton of new things that I needed to figure out and learn in order to make this keychain. But you know, that's exactly the way I work. I, I find something that I want to make, in this case, this keychain, and then I just figure out what it is I need to do in order to make it. And I love it because now I have this little cool keychain that I can always carry with me. That's a piece of my very first home. I hope that you enjoyed the videos. And if you like the keychains, I'm actually, uh, I made a few extras in order to sell on my website. And if people like them enough, then I will probably continue Continue to sell them. So check the link in the description if you're interested. That's it for this one. I will see you next time. Nice.